Mr. Speaker, before I begin going count by count, allow me also to state on two important questions and I want honorable members to listen. Two important things, two things are important. That this is an historical moment and it is also a constitutional moment because Kenya under the 2010 constitution has never dealt with the impeachment of a deputy president. However, we have dealt in numerous times with the impeachment of governors. And our courts of law have set the threshold on which impeachments should be considered. And I thought from the onset, it is important for me to set out the threshold on which impeachment should be considered. So that as I take you through the evidence that we have, you can gauge the evidence against what the courts of law have decided. And Mr. Speaker, allow me to read paragraph 31 of civil appeal number 21 of 2014, famously called the Wambora decision. The Wambora decision is now the, the locus for most of the impeachment cases and has been cited with approval by our Supreme Court. In, in paragraph 31, the court stated as follows. Our reading and interpretation of Article 181 of the Constitution, as read with Section 33 of the County Government Acts, shows that the removal of a governor is the constitutional and political process, underlying constitutional and political process. It is a sui generis process that is quite quasi judicial in nature, and rules of natural justice and fair administrative action must be observed. What I'm going to read is the most important part. The impeachment architecture in Article 181 of the Constitution reveals that the removal of a governor is not about criminality or culpability, but is about accountability, is about political governance, as well as policy and political responsibility. Mr. Speaker, the coaching of Article 181 in the Constitution, which relates to removal of a governor, is similar to the coaching of Article 150, which relates to the removal of a deputy governor. And therefore, mutatis mutandis, the, what the Court of Appeal did state, that the removal of a governor is not about criminal or capability. It is about accountability, political governance, as well as pol policy and political responsibility applies to the removal of a deputy president. Mr. Speaker, the standard I am prepared this, uh, this morning to discharge my burden of proof because EU alleges must also prove. And I am ready to discharge it to the required threshold. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, in consideration of the time that I have been given, allow me now to go to the specific grounds. Ground number one, Mr. Speaker, ground number one. Briefly. On ground number one, Mr. Speaker, we have alleged that the Deputy President has grossly violated the Constitution, and particularly Article 10.2a, Article 10.2b and c, Article 27, Article 73, Article 75, Article 129, Article 147, and Article 131. Mr. Speaker, for clarity, Allow me to read out the specific provisions so that members may relate with what we are saying. Article 10 is about national values and principles of governance. Article 10 to B states as follows. 
The national values and principles of governance include patriotism, national unity, important national unity, sharing and devolution of power, the rule of law, democracy, and participation of the people. B, human dignity, equality, social justice, inclusiveness, inclusiveness. Underline the words national unity and inclusiveness. C, good governance, integrity, transparency, and accountability. Mr. Speaker, we have also alleged that the Deputy President has breached Article 27 of the Constitution. Article 27 of the Constitution is about equality and freedom from discrimination. In particular, the articles, Article 27 4 states as follows. The state shall not discriminate directly or indirectly against any person on any ground, including, on any ground, including race, sex, pregnancy, marital status, and so forth, and so forth. Important, the state shall not discriminate. Mr. Speaker, we have also alleged that the Deputy President has breached Article 73.1 of the Constitution. In particular, Article 73.1 is on leadership and integrity, and it speaks to the authority that is assigned to a, to a state officer. And it states as follows. Article 73.1a, that the authority assigned to a state officer is a, Patrick, is a public trust to be exercised in a manner that is consistent with the purposes and objects of this constitution. Article 73.2b states that the guiding principles of leadership and integrity include objectivity and impartiality, objectivity and impartiality in decision making and in ensuring that decisions are not influenced by nepotism, favorism, underline favorism, or other improper motives or corrupt practices. Mr. Speaker, we can go on and on to demonstrate in Article 75 and Article 75.1c that the contact of a state officer, a state officer shall behave whether in public and official life, in private life, or in association with other persons in a manner that avoids C, demeaning the office that the officer holds. Mr. Speaker, I am taking time on this one because it is important to demonstrate that the Deputy President has not lived up to the high calling of the office that he holds and thus has violated, the, has violated the Constitution. Article 129 is about the principles of executive authority. And particularly, we have said that the Deputy President has breached Article 129.2. Article 129.2 states that the executive authority shall be exercised in a manner that is compatible with the principles of service to the people of Kenya and for their well-being and benefit. We have also alleged that the Deputy President has breached Article 147 in conclusion on this particular ground. And Article 147 provides is about the functions of the deputy president and the deputy it provides that the deputy president shall be the principal assistant to the president and shall deputize the pres shall deputize for the president in the executions of the president's functions article 131 is the one that provides for the authority of the president and under 131 2 it provides as follows, that the president shall a, respect, uphold, and safeguard the constitution, and c, promote and enhance the unity of the nation. Promote and enhance the unity of the nation. Mr. Speaker, it is, it is our allegation that on numerous occasions in the last two years, 
the de deputy president has used divisive language. He has described the Kenya government as a company. He has described the Kenya government as a shareholding company where it is only the shareholders of the company who should benefit. And it is our contestation that that particular shareholding language contradicts and contravenes and violates all the provisions of the constitution that I have highlighted above. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the constitution does require even at the preamble recognizes that Kenya is a multi-ethnic society. We have about 44, I think 45 ethnic groups in this country, big and small. And all of them are recognized by our constitution and all of them need to enjoy their equal rights. And the deputy president has consistently told Kenyans in several places of this country that some will benefit from government and others will not benefit from government. Mr. Speaker, I need not waste a lot of time prosecuting this point because those of you who listened to the deputy president yesterday, he, read, he did admit that he has been using the shareholder and company language against Kenyans. Since last the only year, thing that he did, and when, when there is an admission by the accused person, the prosecution does not need to prove shares. a point. And therefore, I will be urging members, I will be urging members of this house Since. to find that this allegation is proved and to find that the deputy president indeed did admit that uh, he has been using the shareholder language only that for the first time and this is important mr speaker for the first time the deputy president did while admitting he said that he has been referring to the shareholder company language in reference to coalition agreements the evidence that i'm going to present shortly will demonstrate that he has never, in his utterances in the last two years, talked about coalition agreements or power sharing deals that were signed before the election among the Kenya Kwanzaa political formation. He has been talking directly to communities. He went to Kajiado. He told the people of Kajiado that they do not have shares. He went to Kitui during a church service at AIC Kitui. And he told the people of Ukambani that they should not even have, be having a cabinet minister in government. He went to Bungoma and told the people of Bungoma that they have had too many appointments in government and the votes they brought are not equivalent to the votes they brought. He went to Nandi and told the people of Nandi that they are a major shareholder and they will benefit more than others in this government. And he has been using the language in direct reference to communities, not to political party formations. Mr. Speaker, Without belaboring this point, without belaboring this point, allow me now, allow me now to request that the evidence on ethnic profiling and divisive shareholder politics, as contained in video one and video four, be played for the House to take note the last of the evidence. Than your shares. Senior, near shares. Put away your company. All the members, we did the, 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 the technicians who are playing. I can't request that you repeat. You repeat and you play it with a higher, with, on a higher volume. Please, please pause, please pause it. And I also request Mr. Speaker, you direct that during the time that we are playing our clips, our time be paused. Please, please repeat so that members may appreciate and also Kenyans may know that we are not, we are not persecuting. We are not persecuting. Kali, the company, than your shares. Senior, near shares. Kuna wenye kampuni, wale wako na shares mingi, kuna wale wako na chache, kuna wale awana. Sasa nyini, muli university kwa hii kampuni, ya wili ya mruto na regali kashamwa. Sasa lazima, Mufune, yule ambaye alipanda, atafanya nini? Simulipanda? Simuli ya muka mapema? Muka sema mutaki kusikia mambo ya ile system na nini? Muka invest, muka panda, muka palilia, muka weka mpolea, muka mwagilia maji wakati ya kufuna diyo huu. Na hitha kuwa na muna hiyo. 
Najua wengine wanaandika chifu ati mimi nasema ati wale walipanda wavune kwanza. Iko makosa? Iko makosa? Hata wao watavuna lakini wangoje. Si wale walipanda na wavune kwanza. Wakishavu na wavune 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 ile tabaki kidogo wale wakupanda waingie watavute huko nini ile tapatikana wachukue kwenye. Si iko namna hiyo? Na itakuwa namna hiyo. Ndio watu wakipiga kura waelewe hii kura tukusema nini? Hii kura iko na maana. Nyinyi ya mwezi piga kelele huko mpige kelele. Mnasema William Mutton bure hawezi mnaita e majina alafu akipata akigawa mnapiga laini atibuko pale mbele. Ati mnataka mpite wale walisema anafaa atibukue pale mbele inawezekana? Mimi kazi yangu pale kwa ikulu ni hiyo. Ni kupanga hiyo laini. Hapo ni kazi mimi napanga hapo. Mimi naangalia kwa laini nikiona we ulipanda na kutoa wewe nyuma napeleka wewe mbele. Mr. Speaker In the interest of time I have 14 other videos that have been that the deputy president is recorded speaking in different parts of the country same same language saying that Kenya is a, is a company and a company is belongs to shareholders it is clear from the clip I am not the one I am not the one who made that clip the person talking in the clip is none other than the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. Mr. Speaker, the office of the Deputy President is a national office. The territory of the Republic of Kenya is defined in the Constitution. The territory of the Republic of Kenya is known. The ethnic communities of the Republic of Kenya are all supposed to enjoy benefits from the government. And therefore, I am, invi I'm inviting, I am inviting members of this assembly to find that the Deputy President has breached all the articles of the Constitution as contained in this ground. Mr. Speaker, it is no gain saying that divisive ethnic politics are dangerous. You need not look further than the country of Yugoslavia. What ethnic politics did to the country of Yugoslavia? You need not look further than the country of Bosnia. What ethnic politics did to the country of Bosnia? You need not look further than the country of Rwanda. What ethnic politics did to Rwanda? You need not look further than the country of Burundi. What ethnic politics did to the country of Burundi? Until today, they are trying to reconfigure their state. You need not look further than Sudan. What ethnic politics have done to the good Republic of Sudan that was once a stable state? You need not look even further than the country of Nigeria. Mr. Speaker, Ethiopia. Mr. Speaker, our own country, Kenya, 2007, we experienced post-election violence. You would remember that in 1992, there were clashes in Molo. And Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, character is important in evidence. The Deputy President, there is evidence to show that during the post-election clashes in Molo, he was a district officer in Molo. Character, character, character is very important in deciding evidence and in persuasion. Mr. Speaker, in 1992, there were clashes in Likoni, and our tourism has never recovered. Mr. Speaker, we need not go that direction again. And a person occupying the high office of the Deputy President, if they want to take Kenya in that direction, the time has come for the National Assembly to stand on its feet to defend the Constitution and to impeach the Deputy President. So that even if on, not on any other ground, for purposes of dividing Kenya, the Deputy President today must be impeached. Yeah, must Mr. Speaker, allow me to turn to my ground two.